Come on, go, come on over. Scott, you can start us off. Oh, actually, I see some of these in the chat. Rob, you're going to start us off. Okay, come on over. Hey, I can't type. Can I go after whoever's after Rob or whenever the next yep. opening is? Yeah. Yep, we're all pretty small group, so we should be able to to uh, get through this pretty easily here. You may have to scoot that back because you're quite a bit taller. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. Yeah. Or lower the chair, one or two. And Cody, we had another in the Brad session this morning. We had another um, talk about the the Keegan and Chris Murray like taunting by the fans, <clears throat> and uh, we asked you about that. Uh, with Hunter Dickinson at Michigan, and you seemed unable to dispel the rumors that you guys are not hate, hateful enemies. So I wonder, instead of saying, you know, this Michigan, Indiana big guys, Trace Jackson Davis or Hunter, instead of saying which one you'd rather fight against, maybe you could say what you like about their games. Hunter Dickinson or um, Trace Jackson? Yeah. I mean, Hunter, like Hunter for um, over his years, um, he's, he's gotten really better, like with this, like, Enhancing his skill set, um, you know, like as you've seen, he's added his jumper. Like he's a, he has a really good um jumper from the mid range and the three pointer right now. Um, I think that that's been his like like the most impressive thing to me, like him being able to like just keep going in that area. Um, with Trace, it's just his ability, like you know, to like his motor. I think Trace's motor is the most like like interesting I've seen. Like for a guy his size and like it's just incredible, you know, how he keeps playing. He, like, he's always, like, he's explosive. He's always active on the offensive glass. He never stops moving. He's always rotating over for blocking sh and blocking shots and stuff like that, so. And every time I've seen them talk about you, they always say really, you know, nice things and complimentary things. Uh, so I assume that you'd enjoy playing against either one of them, whatever the outcome. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, man. Hey, Kofi, I'm guessing, uh, what did you guys learn from last year about, like, emotionally recharging after such a big win? I mean, you guys had that against Iowa, and you obviously had it in the tournament against Ohio State last year. What did you learn that you can kind of draw from this time around? Uh, well, just, just the consistency part of it. Um, you know, like like you said, we just went through um, a long season. Um, you know, we won the regular season, obviously. Um, like right now, it's just about like building, keeping that, um, keeping that streak going. I'm just trying to find different ways, or or better ways to win. You know, like trying to get better in our offense and our defense. Um, you know, and just like basically just keeping that that competitive mindset. You know, keeping that competitive um, um flow going. You know, you don't want to like take a take a day or two off and like have that mental lapse. You know, we want to keep keep that focus going, um, moving into the, to the tournament. So definitely just like keeping that competitive drive and just like staying focused to the goal. Did it help having some time off? Like it, it felt like last year you guys won and then you had almost no time and you were still in Indianapolis the whole time. Did it help having time off and then a bus trip to kind of like refresh and maybe reprioritize where you guys were at? I mean, definitely. I mean, um, last year was a different situation. You know, last year we won the we won the Big Ten tournament um, championship. You know, um, this year is the, we won the regular season championship. I feel like we're more pumped right now going into the tournament because guys – I understand how big this could be for us, you know, to win both of it, you know. So I think this is a good thing for us, you know, to get have this time off. And hopefully after the Big Ten tournament, um, Coach, if we're successful, in which I think we will be, um, Coach will, like, you know, do the same, take the same approach, you know. I think this approach has been really good for us because guys are, like, are, like they're fresh now. I think their minds are right. You know, guys are, like, they're not, they're not too high, they're not too low. So, you know, I think this approach is really good. Thanks, Kofi. I appreciate it, man. Hey, Kofi, I mean, you guys figured out, you know, what it takes to win three games in three days last year at the tournament. Just what's the, I don't know if it's a secret behind it, but what, what's important to trying to make a run like this? And then obviously knowing you've got to do something similar in the NCAA tournament. Um, I think it's just, it's awareness and it's toughness, man. You know, um, you got to be aware of the fact that at any time, you know, in, in any one of those days, you could be sent home um, early. You don't want that, you know, it's like, there's a different level of importance right now. You know, we want to keep playing. We want to play all three games, you know. So we just have to be aware that, you know, we can't have any mental lapses, like I said, any, like, weakness, any, like, like a focus. You know, we got to be locked in, like, all, all all week that we're here, you know, make sure that we're focused. And it's just like, we just got to have that competitive job. We got to go out there. We got to fight every day, you know. We got to give, give, give it our best. We're skilled enough and talented enough as, as individuals, you know, 
where we just have to give that collective effort, you know, where we're we're diving on the floor for this ball, we're taking charge, and we're doing everything that that winning requires, you know. So that's definitely it. You know, Trent mentioned that like it's kind of been this case all season, but you're you're sort of the Super Bowl for every team, and you're getting every team's best shot. I guess how have you feel like maybe you guys have managed that when that's maybe you felt that's been the case for like we can't forget three, four it. Months coach mind us every every practice. You know, give you, it doesn't leave our minds. You know, every practice he comes, he says he tells us we got a bullseye on our back. Um, you know, so we 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 know that every team is after it. Um, due to the success that we've had in the past years, the past couple of years, you know, so we, I think we, we do a really good job of the staying ready. You know, we we got guys that got a chip on their shoulder. We got guys that have that edge. You know that. That's competitive, like you know. So I don't think we have we have a problem with that. Just like not being aware of that bullseye, you know. We, I think we're all focused and we're ready for whatever. Thank you. Hey, Kofi. Hope your hope your exam went well. Um, earlier, Alfonso kind of spoke about how he didn't have a whole lot of success in March when he was at Utah, whether it was in the Pac-12 tournament or in the NCAA tournament. What kind of advice did you give? Alfonso, when you guys are traveling over to Indy, or I guess any of the freshmen who just don't have much experience or much success in single elimination tournaments like this? My whole thing is just like telling those guys, like I've been telling them since they started, just telling those guys, like emphasizing the importance of what we were playing for. You know, I feel like my freshman year, I didn't know the importance because I've never been in that situation. So I didn't know the importance until after it got canceled. And then my sophomore year, when I came back, I, like me and Ayo, we really like locked in and we spoke a lot. And then we, you know, we, we we made that idea, like we made that like like a priority for us to like, you know, tell those guys, oh, this is important. We need to win. We need to win. We need to win. And we know we prioritize winning, you know. So it's just t- telling those guys like we're playing for something really big and just making sure that I remember every day that we're playing, some, playing for something really big. So it's not, it's not one of those things where you could like, oh, yeah, I'll take today off while it's chill today, you know, and make it up ne- the next day. We can't do that. We got to make sure that everything – Everything counts. Everything matters, you know. So I've been telling Fonzo that for, like since he came here, like every day, bro. You go on the court, bro. Just try to get better and try to win, bro. Like do whatever you can take to win because we're playing for something big and it could go by fast, you know. So just telling those guys that. And then I guess to quickly follow up, you talk about this understanding of you know you have to win, you have to win because if you don't win, you're gonna go home. Is that something that became maybe a real big realization to you after what happened against Loyola last year? Um, yeah, man, definitely, man. Uh, I feel like it, it's, it happened to me before that, you know, it happened to me my, since my freshman year, you know, um, like coach, like he's one of those dudes that he he wants to win above anything else. You know, and since I came here, I've started to realize, like since my freshman year, I've started to realize that what I do on the court, my my individual success doesn't matter if my team is not, is not good, you know, not to put, not to put like anything self, like self, like anything about me out there, but like, if we don't win my freshman year, I don't get the first big time freshman of the year. You know what I'm saying? Like nothing good happens when you're when you're the only one successful. Your team has to be successful as as uh, overall. So, like that, it's it's been in my mind since my freshman year. Since coach been telling me that, you know, and I try to stick with it. That every time I get on the court, I got to do something different. I got to try to even if I'm not getting the ball, I got to make sure I play defense. I got to make sure I step it up on the defensive end. I got to make sure I set good screens or whatever it is. Just just doing the little things, you know. And I've been trying to prioritize that. Just doing the little things and like. Let's do whatever it takes to win. Thanks, Kofi. Appreciate it. Hey, Kofi, I'm sure it wasn't your original plan to have a third year in, in college. So I'm just wondering, like, what's your experience been like on and off the court this year, having a third season in college? It's been wonderful, man. Um, I have no regrets, man. Like, I, I, the, the thing, the thing with me is, like, I thought, like, like sometimes you put yourself in, in some situations, and like, at the beginning, you start thinking, like. Like, is this really what, what I need to do? And you, you, have, you have doubts and stuff, but like every year that I've chose to come back in the past three years, I, I've, I've been really happy with what my choice. I think it's just the thing like where I, I, I let God, you know, I let, I let go and I let God, you know? So if, if, if I come back for my third year, or if I, when I came back for my second year, I was like, yo, this is God's plan. You know, like I'm gonna do whatever I can to be successful. I'm gonna do whatever I can to make it where I, where I wanna get. But if I need to come back for another year, I'm not in any rush to go anywhere. I'm, you know, I'm I'm going through it. I'm I'm just gonna, you know, just just ride the wave. You know, to, just be where my feet is at. You know, so that's definitely what I think. Yeah, I know. Uh, we talked the other day about the the one more year chance fans were giving you. Is that a real possibility, Kofi? I mean, you know, four years for a guy like you doesn't seem like realistic. But with NIL now, like, how does that factor in 
to a decision making process for a guy like you? I know in a couple months. I mean, all things are I think all things possible. You know, like, like I said, I'm not I'm not in a rush. I I want to be in the NBA. I want to be a professional basketball player, but I'm not in a rush. Like right now, as of right now, I think I'm I think that I'm ready. But you know, anything can happen in the in, in the foreseeable future, and you know, I'm not gonna take that away that option away from myself just yet. You know, so. Thanks, Kofi. Appreciate. It. Hey, Kofi. It seems like uh, how games are called in the postseason, you know, with a, a new set of officials and new eyes, can be pretty impactful for you. Um, do you did you have that experience last year? Do you get a few more calls in the postseason? Yeah, I definitely think it was better. I think it was a little bit better last year. Um, I, I didn't pay attention to it a lot, but now that you asked that question, I definitely, um, see, I definitely see where you know it was a little bit better. Um, it's just like officiating and like. Just like you know, it's like it's, it's like different competition, you know. And the Big Ten guys know they could beat up on me and stuff like that, and not and not like get penalized for it, you know. I think other like other schools like and and people like outside of like the Big Ten, they really know that you know they they take really good like they un, they have an understanding, you have a better understanding of like not fouling and not like you know like just being careless with that. So how can that impact your team? You know, not just in this Big Ten tournament, but in the NCAA tournament. I mean, I don't think there's that much of an impact on, on the team, you know, like regardless of me getting fouled and not getting calls or whatever, I think my team is going to do what it takes to win. You know, we've been doing that all year. We've been doing that for the past three years, you know, like if you if you know, if you if you see the games, you, you see what it is and we've been really successful anyway. So I don't think it should be a huge impact whether they call fouls on me or not. Thanks, Kof. Hi, Kobe. This is kind of similar to what Jeremy asked, but I know... I mean, someday you guys get that kind of big moment where you get the Big Ten championship storming the court. Were those kind of the moments you thought of and were kind of hunting when you decided to return? And did that kind of help, I guess, reaffirm your decision over last summer? Um, I want to say I want to reaffirm my um, decision. I think I want to win above everything, like I said. And you know, success definitely gives you that warm feeling, you know, that that that, that joy. But like my decision ultimately is going is not going to be based on what I accomplished or what like. Or, or little things like that, you know? So I think my whole thing is just like, it's like basically going through the way I do, you know, praying and praying on it, listening to the input of my family and stuff like that. And, you know, just ultimately making the right decision for myself. But I don't think um, any accomplishments or any like, you know, championship would like sway my decision or have an impact on my decision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess my last thing is I know, I guess you kind of having already gone through with that, I guess kind of that NBA, process or decision making process I guess this time around what have you kind of learned about that process and is there anything you'll I guess approach differently or is it there's this just kind of a separate case that you look at kind of a case no, or if that I'm, makes sense it's not anything I'm, I'm not looking at anything right now I'm not looking at any approach right now I know I know that I'm capable you know and I've been getting good input um from you know from different um teams and different like people you know so I think I think that I'm ready personally you know and I I know that you know, if I keep working um, with my work ethic and like this, my uh, mindset and determination, I'll be good. You know, so I think that I'm ready for, for the next step. Thanks, Kofi. Uh, one of the regional sites is in Chicago, I meant, and, and get through the first two rounds. Uh, do you guys ever? Think about that, uh, the fact that you'd be basically a home team in the in the tournament That's if you interesting, got that. Man. I never two sides actually, you know. And I never really thought about I never really thought about that. I never really um be big time. As you will know, like Illinois fans, they come out wherever you are and they support, you know. So to have that, um I have, I have a chance to play in Chicago in the tournament in front of them, that would be legendary. Thank you. Hey, Kofi, I just want to follow up. Um, how, how has NIL impacted guys like you, Oscar Shibwe, where you can have that option, right? Like that you might not have had in the past. Like how, how has that, you know, help, helped you guys, affected you guys? For me, for me, it's, it's, it was just like um, a different experience, you know, regardless of what happened, regardless if I, if I stayed or if I left last year, I'll be, I'll be able to make money, you know, I'll be able to like, you know, make a living. But I think it's just an experience, you know, just like, just knowing that you could come back to school and just like, have the it's like it's like it's like majority it's like you have a different like it's like you have, you have more you have more options like, because you could come back to school and you could enhance your education 
you could play college basketball for another year and not to worry about like the outside outside world like being like bills and stuff like that and you get to make money you know so i think it's like just those those things collectively um that definitely like um you know make the decisions a little bit easier for you but I don't think that's the NIL part of it. It's, I don't think that's the money part of it. Is is any reason for anybody to come back to college? I think it's all those collective reasons. Well, thanks, Coach. Coach, that first year, of course, the tournament was canceled. But how how important was it to to get tournament experience at last year? And and uh, the bulk of your you know your regular players have that experience now. So how do you how do you pass that on to some of the new guys like RJ and Goody and some some of the new guys on the team? Um, those guys, those guys are really good listeners. You know, last year we didn't have anybody that played in the tournament, so you know we we didn't have the opp opportunity to listen and like learn from that. You know, like this year we have um guys that played in the tournament, like you said, guys that have um experience. Um, you know, even the guys that didn't play, they have experience because they've been there, they know the environment. You know, so we could pass those knowledge down to the freshmen and whoever didn't play in the tournament. You know, and they could like basically like adjust um easier. You know, or make make them feel a little bit more comfortable. You know, or feel a little bit a little bit more confident. You know, so. I think our experience is definitely a, um, a key factor in us, and it could be a part of our success, you know, just like relaying the messages to those guys and making sure that they're ready. Thank you. Hey, Kofi, along with the regional site question, like last year you guys left and it was like, we'll be in Indianapolis for maybe a month. Does it change, like, does it give any extra juice knowing that like this could be a multi-city stop? Like, I feel like that's, part of it is to not just be stuck in one place, but be able to go from here to there. Like, does that add anything extra for you guys? Yeah, man, that definitely gives us a, that, 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 that extra, like, juice, you know, like, it gets guys excited. You know, like, I was talking to Trent the other day, and Trent was like, yo, Cole, I'm trying to go to New Orleans, bro. I'm like, New Orleans? And he's like, yeah, bro, that's where the Final Four is at, you know? And I'm like, oh, word? I feel like, I feel like it's like, it, it sounds crazy, but I feel like it's, it's, like, it's definitely like a, a motivation for these guys. You know, like, guys are like, yo, I'm, I'm trying to get there, but like, that's that excitement, just like, just trying to get that experience and just trying to be in that atmosphere, you know, guys are really pumped up, you know, so I think it gives guys that extra juice and motivation to go out there and play hard and, you know, just try to get to the next level. Thank you, Kobe. I'll close it out. Uh, Brad said this morning that he's going to have a filet and a wedge salad, a cabernet and a shrimp cocktail. How much are you going to have at St. Elmo's and how many ribeyes can you eat? <laughs> I might get a, I might get a steak tonight, you know, I'm, I don't think I'm going to eat that much tonight. I'm not really hungry. But I could, I could definitely eat a lot. I could definitely eat a lot, bro. Like, I've, I've, I've done it before where I just, like, went all out and ate a lot, ate a lot of food, so I know, like, how much I could take. And it's, it's, pretty, it's, it's pretty huge. It's a, it's a pretty huge amount. But I don't think I'm, I'll eat that much tonight. I believe you. Thanks, man. Good luck. Thank you. All right, that'll wrap us up. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Kofi. Thanks, Kofi. Thanks, Boston! Mm -hmm. And it yeah.